Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a great day. Let's make one of the best paper purses on YouTube. So last week we made this beautiful smaller purse and it measures six by five and it's two inches deep. Today we're going to make one that is the medium size and it measures eight by six and a half by three. I'm going to do something slightly different. I am not going to use my black and white striped paper. I am going to use a different pattern because I want to show you guys that although I used the black and white stripes and it was beautiful, you don't have to use the same type. You can use a variation of papers to make your bag and to brand your bag. So today I am going to use one of my rolls from Hobby Lobby's The Paper Studio. And I love this paper. You get a lot of it on the roll and this week it's on sale. And I think you can get this roll for um, $3. So what I did was I cut a piece off of the roll and I have some chipboard pieces that I am going to lay down. And my chipboard measures, I have two pieces that measure eight by six and a half. So I'm going to place one down and place it closer to the edge because I've got to trim some of this off anyway. Make sure I'm getting this kind of straight. And then I have a piece that measures eight by three. This is my base. And I'm gonna give myself a nice little spacing on this and I'm going with about a little over an eighth. And then I'll put down my second piece of eight by six and a half. And then what I need to do is come back and we are going to trim off some of our excess paper because we don't need it all. And I'll leave my ends like that. That's not gonna hurt anything. So then I will fold and burnish over my edges so that I can get them ready to be miter cut and then tape down. you guys have been sending me some fantastic pictures of your bags and your branding and I absolutely love it because I think a lot of you guys are taking it to heart that branding is very important as I said in a previous video branding really represents who you are it's not just for making money but what do you want to be known for in your style of crafting and I always want to be known for being creative and coming up with quality ideas and putting great craftsmanship into it. And I think I do that. So now we've got this and we are going to come back with our tape and I am going to use my, I'm going to use my one inch tape for that. And as you guys know, I did show you in my recent Q and A the tape that I use and it'll also be in the description box so please check there if you're interested in this tape. Okay, and one thing that I forgot to mention as I was cutting it is what I was doing was cutting at an angle so that when I fold over, everything is going to line up nice and neat. So if you cut at an angle, giving yourself about an inch in, or an eighth of an inch in spacing, you'll be able to fold your papers over and not have any problems. And if you are in doubt, you can always take a piece of chipboard and then just trace behind it and it'll give you a line and you can cut that way. 
But then there's also another tip that I'm going to share with you guys in just a minute. But let me get this tape up. Okay, and the tip that I want to share was given to us um, by Francine Langlois. She has been a longtime member of the online family and she shared this wonderful idea. Sometimes we might cut too short and if we think we have, we should take a piece of the corner pieces that we cut off and then just place them down so that when you fold over your paper, even if you cut short, it's going to be fixed and covered. And I love that tip and I was so thankful to Francine for sharing it. And I'm all about giving credit when something um, is shared with me or I source something from another place. I believe in giving credit. I never believe in letting you guys think that I created something when I didn't. I think that is just wrong. And unfortunately, not everybody shares that view, but that is my view. All right, guys, so our paper is all folded over, and I think this is going to make a beautiful bag. Don't you agree that this pattern is just so beautiful, so cute? And like I said, it doesn't have to be stripes. It can be any pattern that you want to go with for your bag. So I'm gonna bring in my scoreboard, and we are going to do our side pieces. And we have a piece that measures four by six and a half, and we are going to score this at half an inch, at two, over my scores because I've already scored but I want to make sure that they're deep enough so that's half an inch two and three and a half oops went off there and then we're going to turn it and score this at half an inch on the top and then flip it half an inch on the bottom and I've already done one so I can put my scoreboard away and then I am going to come back and just fold and burnish my scores. And I chose this color because I think that it really does pick up the pink that's in this plaid. I think it's very pretty. All right, so on one end of our bag, we are going to just take some glue and fold it down completely. And then on the other end, we'll come in and right here at the bottom, we have got two end pieces and we're going to remove those. So all I'll do is just take my little scissors here and I'm going to notch out these little pieces. Now we are ready to place the side pieces down. So what I'm going to do is bring this back in. And what I'll be doing is I'll be taking this piece and putting it down right here. So I am going to add my glue to this piece. Then I'll lay it down just like that. And it's going to fit right inside of these fold marks here. So let's go ahead and add some hot glue. And then I'm going to place this down and I'm going to turn it over just so that I can look at it to make sure I've got it nice and straight and in place and I think that's good enough. So that's how it's going to look when you have it down and then it'll look just like this. So let's do the other side. Take my glue, place my glue right along the bottom. And you can use wet glue for this. Um, I don't use tape because the tape will not hold this, so don't use tape. And then I'll just get that nice and stuck, just like that. Okay guys, so now that we've got our side pieces adhered to the bottom, this is the point at which you would add feet if you want to add feet. And I am going to add thumbtacks as my feet. You guys have seen me use actual purse feet and I would use that if I was making this to give away as a gift, but I'm not. So I am simply going to use my thumbtacks. But if you have purse feet 
and you want to really jazz it up, by all means use those because it does add a whole lot of charm to your little um, paper tote. So I am going to take my thumbtacks and position them right there and then I'll push this one through. I'm going to bring this up and then the way that I do mine when I'm using thumbtacks is I bring in a pair of needle nose pliers or wire nips and then I just gently bend it and then I'll turn it and do the same thing with the other. So I like to bend it, bend them in facing each other. And the reason why I do this is so that whoever has this bag doesn't get stuck by my thumbtacks. So then I take my hammer and I beat that tip down to where it's inside of the chipboard and there is no possibility of being stuck by it. Okay, so we have our feet on and now we're ready to go ahead and glue the side pieces. To the actual bag itself and I always glue my side pieces before I place my liner so that when I put my liner in it covers up this you see that difference it covers that up if I was to place my liner down and then glue down my side pieces my liner would have this on top of it and I just don't like that you can do it that way if you want but I like that complete finished look so I am going to bring in my glue gun and you can use wet glue on this as well, but I would not use tape. And I'm gonna run a bead of glue and then I will simply bring it up and I'm getting it matched up on the side, just like this, so that it's nice and tight. And I'll come back with my bone folder while my hot glue is still a little wet and get everything smooth out and you can see just how clean that is. Now that we've done this side, we need to come over and do this side. So wherever I start, I just come all the way over and do the opposite end so that I'll have a flap like this. So all I'm going to do at this point is bring it over, bring my glue gun back in and place my bead of glue. And then I'll take this piece and bring it up just like I did the other. So I'm simply bringing it up, getting it nice and straight, and I'll come back with my bone folder and just smooth everything down so that when you look at it from the side, nice. So let's fold these in a little bit. And I do these one at a time. So I am going to place some glue on this one. Get my bag closed. Same process that I've been using on the other side. Go on the inside. Get everything stuck down. Isn't that beautiful? Everything is as it should be. So now, I've got my last piece here and this is how I do it so it's kind of hard to get in and get glue all the way down at the bottom when it's like this so what I do is I take some glue and I squeeze it in at the bottom and then I come up and then all I do is take my bag and stand it because that glue is going to want to drip downward anyway and then I come back and get this nice and stuck on the inside and we have got a nicely finished side and front to our bag so there we've got our bag part made all right so now we get to put in our side pieces and our side pieces are going to measure seven and three quarters by six you will need two of them and this is a very very simple process so I am going to take my reptile glue and just glue this up you can tape it if you want I like using glue because it gives me a little bit more time to get this into place in case I don't place it down right the first time so all I'm going to do at this point is bring this back in make sure that my sides are popped out because that makes it easier and by popped out I mean like this because that makes it easier for me to get inside 
and place this piece and all I'm doing is putting it down on the inside and I'm sliding it all the way to the bottom just like that all the way down and I'll come back with my bone folder and just smooth everything out And just like that, you can see how pretty that is. And we're going to put a topper on here so everything will tie in. But this is a beautiful paper to use for lining the inside of a bag. And it's that thin paper that you saw me making the crimped bottom bags out of. So it's very easy to work with. So let's do this one. Just going to add my glue. Bring this back in, get this piece positioned. I'm just gonna slide it all the way to the bottom. Then I'll come back in with my bone folder, get everything nice and stuck down. And you can see just how gorgeous, gorgeous this bag is. And now what I have, I'm going to go ahead and put my toppers on before I actually put my inside piece down in here. Okay guys, so what I have for my topper are two pieces of this blush pink and it measures four by eight. So all I'm going to do is place some glue, be generous with it. Then I'm gonna get this stuck down. Place it down just like this. Get it even. Smooth it down. Come back with my bone folder on this side and get that glue smoothed out. Then I'll come across the top, square that off real nice, and I'll go in the inside and just get that glue nice and stuck. And there's my sweet, beautiful little topper. Okay guys, so our bag is almost complete. We've got our topper on and it just finishes off everything so nicely on the inside. Everything just flows. So now we're going to make the handles and I've already made both handles but I'm going to show you how I actually do them. So here's what I do because this is the width of the handle that I like for the bag but you may want to use something different. So I start with the piece that measures 12 by one and a half and then I take that piece and I simply fold it into thirds. Come back with my bone folder, get that stuck down or creased out. And then I fold over my other piece. And then what I do to give all of my bags some added stability, especially when it's a lightweight paper, is I am going to add a stabilizer piece to the inside. So I just cut a strip, didn't measure this because I won't be using this as a handle, but I just cut a strip that's going to fit down on the inside there, just like that, and that's gonna help to stabilize. And then what I'll do is I'll add my glue to one of the ends, and I'll fold that over just like this and get that stuck down. And then I'll come to the other side Fold that over and get that stuck down. And that's how I make a handle. And then what I do is I take it and I run it along my desk just to help it spread the glue and to curve. So then once I've got it like this, I take my keychain ring and I just put it through at whatever length I want my handle to be. That's why I'm not giving you guys a length of my finished handle. It all, it all has to do with what you like, the eye appeal that you like. And so I glue it down just like this. And I'll do my other end just like this.
And then when I make my second one, I lay it next to this one to make sure that they are both the same length. And I come back and I get that stuck down. And then I take another one of my um, keychain components and all I do is I run that through this one and then this is the piece that I am going to connect to the actual bag itself. And then one more thing that I like to do where I have folded my paper through the original ring and glued it down, I come back with my piercer and I add a thumbtack or you can add a brad, whichever one. But if you do add a thumbtack, make sure you come back with your pliers. Get that nice and curved and then you can take your pliers at this point and just squeeze it down into um, your paper. And that way you have a nice metal finish to your handle. All right guys, we're coming down to the home stretch of this bag. So I've already added one of the handles. And then as I was making the bag, I thought it would look really cute with just a little strip going across the front just to kind of bring everything into just this really even more classy look. So I added this strip and it measures eight by one quarter and I think that it just really adds a little interest to the front of this bag and I added it to the back as well. So what I'm going to do now is use my crocodile to punch my holes and I'm using my 3 16 setting and I'm going to be eyeballing this but what I try to do before I punch the hole I try to make my hole as close to the top as possible because that makes putting your rings in a lot easier and you really lessen the chances of damaging your paper as you're trying to put the rings in. So I am pretty much eyeballing this and I'm going to punch and that's going to be good enough. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I'm just going to eyeball it and punch. So I've got my two holes and I got a question on how do you put the handles on without damaging your paper and it just takes practice I don't have a magic trick it just takes practice so what I like to do is I like to take my ring separate it just a little bit and then place the back against the back of the inside here bring it over to where it just goes right into the hole and then I start turning it and that is how I put mine on with, and that's how I'm able, and that's how I put mine on to lessen actually damaging around that hole. So I'll do that again on this one so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. So what I do is I take my ring and I separate it just a little bit. I'm not distorting it. I just have my fingernail through the middle of it. Then I take this ring part here and just kind of prop it up against the back and then I bring it through the hole and that way I can just start feeding it through. But it just takes practice and you will get it. So there we have got our handles on our bag and I think it looks fantastic. Fantastic. So now what we're going to do is we are going to add our inside piece so that we can finish off the bottom of our bag really nice and cute. So what I have is another piece of my medium weight chipboard and this measures seven and three quarters by two and seven eighths. And all I'm going to do is take this, put some glue on it, and then I'm going to stick it down on the inside. And this just gives you some added stability to the bottom of your bag and that way you too can carry water bottles in your bag if you want to. So in order to get it in, again, I am going to pop out my sides. I will take my piece and then I'm going to lay it down just like that and then I'll move it into position. I'll come back with my bone folder 
and get just get everything nice and stuck and there we have got a nicely finished bag don't know if you guys can see the inside well but it looks great and now we can squeeze our sides back in our bag is complete unless you want to do some more decorating for those of you who are branding now is the time that we would actually place our brand for those of you who are just wanting to make a bag then you might want to add some additional decorations to this I am doing this to show you guys how to make the bag so at this point I am going to add my brand and let me get it down nice and straight okay so we have got our brand on and one more thing that I'm going to do in my swap with Crystal who is I am busy crafting on YouTube she gave me these wonderful little diamond shaped um, pieces of bling and I think they would look pretty on here so I'm gonna try a few of them out and see how they look and I'm just gonna space them out like this because I think that really does add some cuteness Oh, I think that's gorgeous. I love these. Thank you, Crystal, for these pieces of bling because I think they do fit on my bag. What do you guys think? Does it work? Am I working it? What do you think? Leave me a comment below and let me know if I worked it. So, I am going to bring in the smaller bag that I made so that you guys can see that even though they're different patterns, branding still works across all patterns and all sizes so whether you're branding or not you can leave the brand off and you can still make this gorgeous bag for any reason it doesn't have to be for marketing you can make it for any reason any season and you know I hope that you guys are finding making these bags very helpful if you are please hit the like button and if you are not a subscriber to my channel I would love to have you join the online crafting family you guys have a fantastic day, and we'll chat later. Bye.